Poems by Sir Walter Rawley. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. Read by Algie Pug. Epitaph. Even such is time which takes in trust our youth, our joys, our all we have, and pays us but with age and dust. Who in the dark and silent grave, when we have wandered all our ways, shuts up the story of our days? And from which earth and grave and dust the Lord will raise me up, I trust. The Nymph's Reply to the Shepherd If all the world and love were young, and truth in every shepherd's tongue, these pretty pleasures might me move to live with thee and be thy love. Time drives the flocks from field to fold, When rivers rage and rocks grow cold, And Philomel becometh dumb, The rest complains of cares to come. The flowers do fade, And wanton fields to wayward winter reckoning yields, A honey tongue, a heart of gall, Is fancy's spring, but sorrow's fall. Thy gowns, thy shoes, thy beds of roses, Thy cap, thy kirtle, and thy posies Soon break, soon wither, soon forgotten, In folly ripe, in reason rotten. Thy belt of straw and ivy buds, Thy coral clasps and sombre studs, All these in me no means can move To come to thee and be thy love. But could youth last and love still breed, had joys no date, nor age no need, Then these delights my mind might move To live with thee and be thy love. The Lie Go, soul, the body's guest, Upon a thankless arrant, Fear not to touch the best, The truth shall be thy warrant. Go, since I needs must die, And give the world the lie. Say to the court, it glows and shines like rotten wood. Say to the church, it shows what's good, and doth no good. If church and court reply, then give them both the lie. Till potentates, they live acting by others' action. Not loved unless they give, not strong, but by affection. If potentates reply, give potentates the lie. Tell men of high condition that manage the estate, their purpose is ambition, their practice only hate, and if they once reply, then give them all the lie. Tell them that brave at most, they beg for more by spending, who in their greatest cost seek nothing but commending, and if they make reply, then give them all the lie. Tell zeal it wants devotion, tell love it is but lust. Till time it meets but motion, till flesh it is but dust, And wish them not reply, for thou must give the lie. Till age it daily wasteth, till honour how it alters, Till beauty how she blasteth, till favour how it falters, And as they shall reply, give every one the lie. Tell wit how much it wrangles in tickle points of niceness, Tell wisdom she entangles herself in over-wiseness, And when they do reply, straight give them both the lie. Tell physic of her boldness, tell skill it is pretension, Tell charity of coldness, tell law it is contention, And as they all reply, so give them still the lie. Tell fortune of her blindness, tell nature of decay, Tell friendship of unkindness, tell justice of delay, And if they will reply, then give them all the lie. Tell arts they have no soundness, but vary by esteeming, Tell schools they want profoundness, and stand too much on seeming, If arts and schools reply, give arts and schools the lie. Tell faith it's fled the city, Tell how the country erreth, Till manhood shakes off pity, And virtue least preferreth, And if they do reply, Spare not to give the lie. So when thou hast, as I commanded thee, Done blabbing, Although to give the lie Deserves no less than stabbing, Stab it he that will, No stab thy soul can kill. 
The Passionate Man's Pilgrimage Give me my scallop shell of quiet, my staff of faith to walk upon, my scrip of joy, immortal diet, my bottle of salvation, my gown of glory, hope's true gauge, and thus I'll make my pilgrimage. Blood may be my body's balmer, no other balm will there be given, whilst my soul, like a white palmer, travels to the land of heaven, where spring the nectar fountains, and there I'll kiss the bowl of bliss, and drink my eternal fill on every milk and hill. My soul will be a dry before, but after it will ne'er thirst more. And by the happy, blissful way, more peaceful pilgrims shall I see, that have shook off their gowns of clay, and go apparelled fresh like me. I'll bring them first to slake their thirst, and then to taste those nectar suckets at the clear wells where sweetness dwells, drawn up by saints in crystal buckets. And when our bottles and all we are filled with immortality, then the holy paths we'll travel, strewed with rubies thick as gravel, ceilings of diamonds, sapphire floors, high walls of coral, and pearl bowers. From thence to heaven's bribeless hall, where no corrupted voices brawl, no conscience molten into gold, nor forged accusers bought and sold, no cause deferred, nor vain spent journey, for there Christ is the king's attorney, who pleads for all without degrees, and he hath angels, but no fees. When the grand twelve million jury of our sins with sinful fury gainst our souls black verdicts give, Christ pleads his death, and then we live. Be thou my speaker, taintless pleader, unblotted lawyer, true proceeder, Thou movest salvation even for alms, not with a bribed lawyer's palms. And this is my eternal plea to him that made heaven, earth, and sea, seeing my flesh must die so soon, and want a head to dine next noon, just at the stroke when my veins start and spread, set on my soul an everlasting head, then am I ready like a palmer fit to tread those blessed paths which before I writ. Life. What is our life? A play of passion, our mirth the music of division, our mother's wombs the tiring houses be, where we are dressed for this short comedy. Heaven the judicious sharp spectator is, that sits and marks still who doth act amiss. Our graves that hide us from the setting sun are like drawn curtains when the play is done. Thus march we, playing, to our latest rest, only we die in earnest, that's no jest. A Farewell to False Love Farewell, false love, the oracle of lies, a mortal foe, an enemy to rest, an envious boy, from whom all cares arise, a bastard vile, a beast with rage possessed, a way of error, a temple full of treason, in all effects contrary unto reason. A poisoned serpent covered all with flowers, Mother of sighs and murderer of repose, A sea of sorrows whence are drawn such showers As moisture lend to every grief that grows. A school of guile, a net of deep deceit, A gilded hook that holds a poisoned bait. A fortress foiled which reason did defend, A siren song, a fever of the mind, A maze wherein affection finds no end, a raging cloud that runs before the wind, a substance like the shadow of the sun, a goal of grief for which the wisest run. A quenchless fire, a nurse of trembling fear, a path that leads to peril and mishap, a true retreat of sorrow and despair, an idle boy that sleeps in pleasure's lap, a deep mistrust of that which certain seems, a hope of that which reason doubtful deems. Sith then thy trains my younger years betrayed, And for my faith ingratitude I find, And sith repentance hath my wrongs bereaved, Whose course was ever contrary to kind. False love, desire, and beauty frail, adieu, Dead is the root whence all these fancies grew. 
Praised be Diana's fair and harmless light. Praised be Diana's fair and harmless light. Praised be the dews wherewith she moists the ground. Praised be her beams, the glory of the night. Praised be her power, by which all powers abound. Praised be her nymphs, with whom she decks the woods. Praised be her knights, in whom true honour lives. Praised be that force, by which she moves the floods. Let that Diana shine, which all these gives. In heaven queen she is, among the spheres. In eyes she mistress-like makes all things pure. Eternity in her oft change she bears. She beauty is, by her the fair endure. Time wears her not, she doth his chariot guide. Mortality below her orb is placed. By her the virtue of the stars down slide. In her is virtue's perfect image cast. A knowledge pure, it is her worth to know. With Circes let them dwell that think not so. Farewell to the Court Like truthless dreams, so are my joys expired, And past return are all my dandled days. My love misled, and fancy quite retired, Of all which past the sorrow only stays. My lost delights, now clean from sight of land, Have left me all alone in unknown ways, My mind to woe, my life in fortune's hand, Of all which past the sorrow only stays. As in a country strange, without companion, I only wail the wrong of death's delays, Whose sweet spring spent, whose summer well nigh done, Of all which past only the sorrow stays. Whom care forewarns, ere age and winter cold, To haste me hence to find my fortune's fold. To his love when he had obtained her. Now, Serena, be not coy, Since we freely may enjoy sweet embraces, Such delights, as will shorten tedious nights. Think that beauty will not stay with you always, but away, and that tyrannizing face that now holds such perfect grace will both changed and ruined be. So frail is all things as we see, so subject unto conquering time, then gather flowers in their prime, let them not fall and perish so. Nature her bounties did bestow on us that we might use them, and tis coldness not to understand what she and youth and form persuade with opportunity that's made as we could wish it. Let's, then, meet often with amorous lips, and greet each other till our wanton kisses in number pass the day Ulysses consumed in travel, and the stars that look upon our peaceful wars with envious lustre. If this store will not suffice, we'll number all the same again, until we find no number left to call to mind and show our plenty. They are poor that can count all they have and more. Nature that washed her hands in milk Nature that washed her hands in milk And had forgot to dry them Instead of earth took snow and silk At love's request to try them If she, a mistress, could compose To please love's fancy out of those Her eyes he would should be of light A violet breath and lips of jelly her hair not black, not over-bright, and of the softest down her belly. As for her inside, he'd have it only of wantonness and wit. At love's entreaty such a one nature made, but with her beauty she hath framed a heart of stone, so as love, by ill destiny, must die for her whom nature gave him, because her darling would not save him. But time, which nature doth despise, and rudely gives her love the lie, makes hope a fool, and sorrow wise. His hands do neither wash nor dry, but being made of steel and rust, turns snow and silk and milk to dust. The light, the belly, lips and breath, he dims, discolours and destroys, with those he feeds but fills not death, which sometimes were the food of joys. Yea, time doth dull each lively wit, And dries all wantonness with it. O oh, cruel time, which takes in trust Our youth, or joys, and all we have, 
and pays us but with age and dust, who in the dark and silent grave, when we have wandered all our ways, shuts up the story of our days. A Vision Upon the Fairy Queen we thought I saw the grave where Laura lay, Within that temple where the vestal flame was wont to burn, And, passing by that way, To see the buried dust of living fame, Whose tomb fair love and fairer virtue kept. All suddenly I saw the fairy queen, At whose approach the soul of Petrarch wept, And from thenceforth those graces were not seen, for they this queen attended, in whose stead oblivion laid him down on Laura's hearse. Here at the hardest stones were seen to bleed, and groans of buried ghosts the heavens did pierce, where Homer's sprite did tremble all for grief, and cursed the axis of that celestial thief. On the Cards and Dice Before the sixth day of the next new year, strange wonders in this kingdom shall appear, Four kings shall be assembled in this isle, where they shall keep great tumult for a while. Many men then shall have an end of crosses, and many likewise shall sustain great losses. Many that now full joyful are and glad shall at that time be sorrowful and sad. For many a Christian's heart shall quake for fear, the dreadful sound of trump when he shall hear. Dead bones shall then be tumbled up and down, In every city and in every town. By day or night this tumult shall not cease, Until a herald shall proclaim a peace. A herald strong, the like was never born, Whose very beard is flesh, and mouth is horn. THE SILENT LOVER One. Passions are likened best to floods and streams, The shallow murmur, but the deep, are dumb. So, when affection yields discourse, it seems the bottom is but shallow whence they come. They that are rich in words, in words discover that they are poor in that which makes a lover. 2. Wrong not, sweet empress of my heart, the merit of true passion, with thinking that he feels no smart that sues for no compassion. Silence in love bereaves more woe than words, though ne'er so witty. A beggar that is dumb, you know, may challenge double pity. As you came from the Holy Land Pilgrim to Pilgrim As you came from the Holy Land of Walsingham, Met you not with my true love by the way, as you came? How shall I know your true love, that have met many one? As I went to the Holy Land, that have come, that have gone. She is neither white nor brown, but as the heavens fair, There is none hath a form so divine in the earth or the air. Such a one did I meet, good sir, such an angel-like face, Who, like a queen, like a nymph, did appear, by her gait, by her grace. She hath left me here all alone, all alone as unknown, who sometimes did lead me with herself, and me loved as her own. What's the cause that she leaves you alone, and a new way doth take, who loved you once as her own, and her joy did you make? I have loved her all my youth, but now old, as you see, love likes not the falling fruit from the withered tree. Know that love is a careless child, and forgets promised past, he is blind, he is deaf when he list, and in faith never fast. His desire is a dualless content and a trustless joy. He is one with a world of despair, and is lost with a toy. Of womankind such indeed is the love, or the word love abused, under which many childish desires and conceits are excused. But true love is a durable fire in the mind ever burning, never sick, never old, never dead, from itself never turning. The Excuse, written by Sir Walter Raleigh in his younger years. Calling to mind, my eyes went long about to cause my heart to forsake my breast. All in a rage I sought to pull them out, as who had been such traitors to my rest. What could they say to win again my grace? Forsooth, that they had seen my mistress' face. 
Another time my heart I called to mind, thinking that he this woe on me had brought, because he to love his force resigned, when of such wars my fancy never thought. What could he say when I would him have slain, that he was hers, and had foregone my chain? At last, when I perceived both eyes and heart excuse themselves as guiltless of my ill, I found myself the cause of all my smart, and told myself that I myself would kill. Yet when I saw myself to you was true, I loved myself, because myself loved you. A description of love. Now what is love? I pray thee tell. It is that fountain and that well where pleasure and repentance dwell. It is perhaps the sauncing bell that tolls all into heaven or hell. And this is love, as I hear tell. Yet what is love? I pray thee say. It is a work on holy day. It is December matched with May, when lusty bloods in fresh array hear ten months after of the play, and this is love, as I hear say. Yet what is love? I pray thee sane. It is a sunshine mixed with rain. It is a toothache, or like pain. It is a game where none hath gain. The lass saith no, and would full fain, and this is love, as I hear sane. Yet what is love? I pray thee say, it is a yea, it is a nay, a pretty kind of sporting fray, it is a thing will soon away, then take the vantage while you may, and this is love, as I hear say. Yet what is love? I pray thee show, a thing that creeps, it cannot go, a prize that passeth to and fro, a thing for one, a thing for mo, and he that proves must find it so, and this is love, sweet friend, I trow. An Epitaph On the Right Honourable Sir Philip Sidney, Knight, Lord Governor of Flushing, Died October the 7th, 1586. To praise thy life, or wail thy worthy death, And want thy wit, thy wit high, pure, divine, Is far beyond the power of mortal line, Nor any one hath worth that draweth breath. Yet rich in zeal, though poor in learning's lore, And friendly care obscured in secret breast, And love that envy in thy life suppressed, Thy dear life done, and death hath doubled more. And I, that in thy time and living state, Did only praise thy virtues in my thought, As one that sealed the rising sun hath sought, With words and tears now wail thy timeless fate. Drawn was thy race a right from princely line, Nor less than such, by gifts that nature gave. The common mother that all creatures have, Doth virtue show, and princely lineage shine. A king gave thee thy name, a kingly mind, That God thee gave, who found it now too dear For this base world, and hath resumed it near To sit in skies, and sought with powers divine. Kent thy birthdays, and Oxford held thy youth, The heavens made haste, and stayed nor years nor time, The fruits of age grew ripe in thy first prime, Thy will, thy words, thy words the seals of truth. Great gifts and wisdom rare employed thee thence, To treat from kings with those more great than kings. Such hope men had to lay the highest things On thy wise youth, to be transported hence. Whence to sharp wars sweet honour did thee call, Thy country's love, religion, and thy friends, Of worthy men the marks, the lives, and ends, And her defence, for whom we labour all. There didst thou vanquish shame and tedious age, Grief, sorrow, sickness, and base fortune's might. Thy rising day saw never woeful night, But passed with praise from off this worldly stage. Back to the camp by thee that day was brought, First thine own death, and after thy long fame, Tears to the soldiers, the proud Castilian's shame, Virtue expressed, and honour truly taught. What hath he lost that such great grace hath won, Young years for endless years, And hope unsure of fortune's gifts for wealth That shall still dure, O happy race, 
with so great praises run. England doth hold thy limbs that bred the same, Flanders thy valour where it last was tried, The camp thy sorrow where thy body died, Thy friends thy want, the world thy virtue's fame. Nations thy wit, our minds lay up thy love, Letters thy learning, thy lost years long to come, In worthy heart's sorrow hath made thy tomb, Thy soul and sprite enrich the heavens above. Thy liberal heart embalmed in grateful tears, Young sighs, sweet sighs, sage sighs, bewail thy fall, Envy her sting, and spite hath left her gall, Malice herself a mourning garment wears, that day there Hannibal died, our Scipio fell, Scipio, Cicero, and Petrarch of our time, Whose virtues, wounded by my worthless rhyme, Let angels speak, and heaven thy praises tell. Another of the same, The Fairy Queen, 1590 the praise of meaner wits this work like profit brings, As doth the cuckoo's song delight when Philomena sings. If thou hast formed right true virtue's face herein, Virtue herself can best discern to whom they written been. If thou hast beauty praised, let her soul looks divine, Judge if aught therein be amiss, and mend it by her eyne. If chastity want aught, or temperance her due, Behold her princely mind aright, and write thy queen anew. Meanwhile she shall perceive how far her virtues soar Above the reach of all that live, or such as wrote of yore, And thereby will excuse and favour thy good will, Whose virtue cannot be expressed but by an angel's quill. Of me no lines are loved, nor letters are of price, Of all which speak our English tongue, but those of thy device. THE OCEAN TO CYNTHIA But stay, my thoughts, make end, give fortune way. Harsh is the voice of woe, and sorrow sound. Complaints cure not, and her tears do but allay Griefs for a time, which after more abound. To seek for moisture in the Arabian sand Is but a loss of labour and of rest, The links which time did break of hearty bands. Words cannot knit, or wailings make anew. Seek not the sun in clouds when it is set, On highest mountains where those cedars grew, Against whose banks the troubled ocean beat. And were the marks to find they hoped port, Into a soil far off themselves remove. On Sesta's shore, Leander's late resort, Hero hath left no lamp to guide her love. Thou lookest for light in vain, and storms arise. She sleeps thy death that erst thy danger side. Strive then no more, bow down thy weary eyes, Eyes which to all these woes thy heart have guided. She is gone, she is lost, she is found, she is ever fair. Sorrow draws weakly where love draws not to. Woe's cries sound nothing, but only in love's ear, Do then by dying what life cannot do. Unfold thy flocks, and leave them to the fields, To feed on hills or dales, where likes them best, Of what the summer or the springtime yields, For love and time hath given thee leave to rest. Thy heart, which was their fold, now in decay, By often storms and winter's many blasts, all torn and rent, becomes misfortune's prey, False hope, my shepherd's staff, now age hath brust. My pipe, which love's own hand gave my desire To sing her praises and my woe upon, Despair hath often threatened to the fire, As vain to keep now all the rest are gone. Thus home I draw, as death's long night draws on, Yet every foot old thoughts turn back mine eyes. Constraint me guides, as old age draws a stone against the hill, Which over weighty lies, for feeble arms or wasted strength to move. My steps are backward, gazing on my loss, My mind's affection and my soul's sole love, Not mixed with fancy's chaff or fortune's dross. To God I leave it, who first gave it me, 
and I her gave, and she returned again, as it was hers. So let his mercies be of my last comforts the essential mean. But be it so or not, the effects are past. Her love hath end, my woe must ever last. A farewell to the vanities of the world. Farewell, ye gilded follies, pleasing troubles. Farewell, ye honoured rags, ye glorious bubbles. Fame's but a hollow echo, gold pure clay, Honour the darling but of one short day. Beauty, the eyes idle, but a damasked skin. State, but a golden prison to live in, And torture free-born minds. Embroidered trains, but pageants for proud swelling veins. And blood allied to greatness is alone inherited, Not purchased, nor our own. Fame, honour, beauty, state, train, blood and birth, Ah, but the fading blossoms of the earth. I would be great, but that the sun doth still level his rays Against the rising hill. I would be high, but see the proudest oak Most subject to the rending thunderstroke. I would be rich, but see men, too unkind, Dig in the bowels of the richest mind. I would be wise, but that I often see the fox suspected, whilst the ass goes free. I would be fair, but see the fair and proud, like the bright sun, oft setting in a cloud. I would be poor, but know the humble grass still trampled on by each unworthy ass. Rich, hated, wise, suspected, scorned, if poor, great, feared, fair, tempted high, still envied more. I have wished all, but now I wish for neither. Great, high, rich, wise, nor fair, poor, I'll be rather. Would the world now adopt me for her heir? Would beauty's queen entitle me the fair? Fame speak me fortune's minion. Could I vie angels with India, with a speaking eye command bare heads, bowed knees, strike justice dumb as well as blind and lame? or give a tongue to stones by epitaphs, be called great master in the loose rhymes of every poetaster. Could I be more than any man that lives, great, fair, rich, wise, all in superlatives, yet I more freely would these gifts resign than ever fortune would have made them mine, and hold one minute of this holy leisure beyond the riches of this empty pleasure. Welcome, pure thoughts! Welcome, ye silent groves, these guests, these courts my soul most dearly loves. Now the winged people of the sky shall sing, my cheerful anthems to the gladsome spring. A prayer book now shall be my looking glass, in which I will adore sweet virtue's face. Here dwell no hateful looks, no palace cares, no broken vows dwell here, nor pale-faced fears. Then here I'll sit and sigh my hot love's folly, And learn to affect a holy melancholy. And if contentment be a stranger then, I'll ne'er look for it but in heaven again. End of poems by Sir Walter Raleigh This recording is in the public domain.